Hey there, so today I want to talk about this guy right here. That's our guard goose, and I want to talk to you about why he's one of the most valuable assets on the farm. So I want to talk about predator protection today and more specifically about our guard goose. And with anything about predator protection, it's one of those things that you don't know it's working when it's working because you don't have any predator problems. As soon as part of your system fails, that's when you notice you have a problem. So a lot of times you think something may not be necessary and then you remove that part of your system and then you have a problem. One of the big things that has worked well for me is a guard goose. And there's some, definitely some pros and cons to it and we'll I'll talk about those as long as, as well as some, uh, some alternatives and other things that you guys might wanna do. So your first thoughts might be, why don't you get a couple of roosters or rooster why don't you get a livestock guardian dog? Uh, we have had roosters and I hate having a rooster. They crow all the time and we live in a suburban area where it does really bother people, including my family. And we're not breeding these chickens. We have hybrid laying birds, so we're not gonna breed them. And I know there are some roosters out there that have decent personalities, but everyone that we've had, like after a certain amount of time, really turns into a jerk and is coming after me or the kids. So. We just really didn't like having a rooster, although some of them can be very cool and, and entertaining to watch, but Larry's a goofball and he's plenty entertaining. In terms of the livestock guardian dog, I didn't think that was an option for us, um, just with our family life. We have a dog, um, she is more of a family dog and not a, a guardian dog at all, and that just didn't seem like it made sense for us in our context and where we live here. So first of all, my setup here, we do a rotationally grazed system with portable electric fencing um, and a mobile chicken coop, and so for me the whole idea is that it's very Portable. There's not, you know, a ton of infrastructure here to protect the animals. The biggest thing that protects the animals besides the guard goose is having this electric fence and having it hot all the time and having a coop that I lock up them up at night that is pretty much predator proof. So I think those two things get most of the things out of the way but the biggest question I get is about aerial predators. Now the ground predators will probably be taken care of by the fence uh, day and night and if, if a predator got in uh, through the fence at night and they got in they still have a trouble getting into the coop so I'm not wor wor really worried about that but the biggest problem is aerial, aerial predators during the day. So our goose's name is Larry, and we don't name the animals on our property, but uh, you know, just the one guard goose, we'd give him a name because he's like the one guy that sticks out here. Um, but he does one of the biggest jobs about aerial predators. Got some vultures here, not worried about those guys. We definitely have hawks in this area, and you can see Larry there just looking up at the sky. He's often, when he hears something, he's often watching and, you know, helps let the chickens know to gather sort of around the coop and sort of stay out of harm's way. So, very effective with the aerial predators. A lot of chickens after a while will get, will get aware of aerial predators and they do have a space to hide so this coop they can just dive underneath if they can't get into the coop so that works really well but Larry will often like make a lot of noise and flap his wings and uh, let the birds know that there's something going on a lot of times it'll just be like an airplane flying overhead um, but either way like he's aware and you can see him looking up at the sky there and anytime like I hear a hawk flying around um, or if I just look up and I see some birds, you know, he's, he's, he sees them too. So we've had Larry for almost two years and we got him as a gosling and he's been guarding since we've had him. Um, it's definitely questionable this practice because it's not a normal behavior for a goose. You know, one thing that makes this work is when you raise a gosling with chicks or ducklings and it thinks that that's its family. So I'm not here to discuss, um, you know, if that's a good thing or bad thing, that's for you guys to decide on. Um, but I just want to talk about how this works here. He's very well fed, he's taken care of, he has everything he needs um, except for a mate. And so if you don't feel that that's something that you wanna do, then I completely understand, but I don't really wanna debate that here. All right, let's talk about pros and cons. Um, first of all, as I mentioned, he's great about um, taking care of the animals during the day with the aerial predators and also check this out. So the sun's down, uh, most of the chickens are in the coop. We have a couple of chickens still waiting to go in, but you can still see Larry there. He's just hanging out, guarding, waiting for everyone to go in. All 
All right, so it's just a little bit later now, and uh, all the chickens are in, and Larry's hanging out waiting for me. Now, if I come down here, um, you know, right before it gets really dark out, but after the sun goes down, Larry's just hanging out waiting for me to uh, show up, and then he'll go in. If it's completely dark outside, he'll already be inside the coop. He does sleep with the chickens. But, uh, yeah, if I come over here now, he'll know. So there he goes. So I'm just coming down here now, and he knows it's time to go in. Now, let me just shut the door really quickly. So, hi Larry. So, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy because Larry just kind of knows how to do that. Yeah, that's right, it's pretty crazy. He actually guards uh, the coop at night and makes sure all the chickens get in at night. And that's not, nothing that like, I had to train him or anything, not that I know how to train a goose, but he just does that. Um, he just really takes care of his, that's, he thinks of this as his flock. So what the biggest pro is that he guards the animals and protects against predator loss. Um, he's also just kind of cool to own. I mean, I own a lot of chickens, but like having a goose is pretty cool. So I know a lot of people who are into homesteading or farming, like you like taking care of animals and if you know I could I'd have lots of different animals but this is just what we're doing right now and so just owning a goose is pretty cool another thing that's cool is his personality he's got a lot more personality than a lot of the chickens do and he's kind of fun to watch and also when people visit if you have a farm where people are visiting or you know you're sharing a lot on social media he can take on a personality and just bring up interest in your farm all right there are plenty of cons about owning a goose um, one thing is there's he eats a lot and so there's that. Um, he also can get quite aggressive in the springtime. We noticed that this year, and I think it was during breeding season, and he was just really frustrated, understandably so. Um, and so he was coming after me quite a bit. So let's talk about the noise uh, level out of him. Um, compared to a rooster, it's a lot less. And that was one of the main factors by not having a rooster and going with a goose, was that the goose does not make nearly as much noise as the rooster. And for us in our suburban environment here and for our family, we've enjoyed him a lot more. He just does not make nearly as much noise and he doesn't start going in the morning uh, as a rooster will. So if you're thinking this might be a cool option for you guys, um, I just want to point out that the best strategy from what I've heard and also from, from what I've done here is to buy the goose as a gosling, buy it as a baby and raise it with a group of baby chicks or baby ducklings or whatever your flock is and he or she will take after their own, take the, the chicks after their own and that will become its family. And that has worked really, really well. Um, I just, I don't have an affiliation with this company, but I really like Metzer Farms. I'll leave a link down below. I've bought lots of ducks and Larry from them and all their birds are awesome. Their customer service is great. And um, they just have a great selection. Now, if you're looking to buy a guard goose, you need to do it in the springtime. Geese only hatch eggs in the springtime. And so if you guys are thinking about this for next year, uh, you really want to start thinking about planning that ahead of time. And if you go on their website, they will list when they're available. So plan ahead and then also plan to have chicks at the same time too, so you can brood them together. I only have experience with this one breed. This is a Roman tufted and it is a male. Um, I don't have experience with other breeds. Uh, this is going after recommendations that I've seen from other people. I bet you a lot of different breeds will be good if you just raise one, um, but that's what we went with. And the male-female thing might be a different decision for you guys. I, I went with the male just because A, he was cheaper, and also I figured he'd be a little bit bigger, a little bit tougher to fend off predators. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I mean, the males are larger than the females, but I think a female would be fine too. In retrospect, I probably would have gotten a female because we could have gotten some goose eggs. That would have been cool every spring. Um, so I think you could go with either, or maybe you go straight run and you get what you get. Uh, maybe that's even a little bit cheaper, I'm not sure. Um, and so I think there's the deciding factor there. And as I mentioned, Larry got pretty aggressive towards me in the springtime, so maybe that wouldn't be such, a, um, such an issue with a female, so I'm not really sure, but it's been working out great with him. One thing to consider about having a guard goose is the feed cost. And I talked to Metzer and they said that this goose should eat between one and three quarters and two pounds of feed a day. And that's a significant cost. And I factor that into the cost of my feed and in terms of profitability for my eggs. And so, you know, I put that in, uh, I'll put, if you want to check out this video here, um, I talk about um, how much money I can make with eggs. And I do factor that cost in, but to me, you know, 
paying a little bit every day for that extra bit of security, it means a lot to me because, you know, raising, losing, you never want to lose animals. It's really painful and um, you just, as the guardian of these animals, you want to make sure you protect their well-being as best as you can. Um, and so I think it's really important to do whatever you can to keep these animals safe. Now, two pounds of feed a day is quite expensive. Uh, he, you can supplement his feed a little bit with grass. You can see him eating some grass here. Um, he does graze quite a bit and um, geese can actually live off grass if you ever see them like in, you know, in fields or parking lots or whatever, like just around town. You always see them grazing on the grass or people's lawns. Um, and so they can eat a lot of grass and so that can be supplemented too. But you have to keep in mind that there are, they are gonna eat quite a bit. He can just eat uh, regular chicken feed. Um, he's eating layer feed, which is what the chickens are getting. He's been fine on that. And I checked with Metzer and they said that was okay. Another thing that you're gonna have to have, if you have chickens, um, one thing you have to keep in mind is their water source. And so I have an open water bowl, uh, automatic water feeder that's like an open open bowl uh, for them to drink out of because, you know, Larry's not going to be able to, if you're into those like nipple waterers, Larry, you know, the goose isn't going to be able to drink out of those. So they need like a, sort of like a duck needs because um, they are, you know, waterfowl. So they need to be able to um, dip their beaks in and clean them out. So make sure you have something like that for them. So hopefully this was some good information for you guys if you're interested in getting a guard goose and how it can be an effective piece of your predator protection strategy for your chickens or ducks. And it's just been awesome for me and for our, for our farm here. And we've enjoyed having Larry besides him being aggressive every once in a while. So hope you got a lot of good information out of this video and maybe answer some questions for you. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could do that. And otherwise guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.